Well, welcome again today, and it's a great day to be alive. I am so excited and uh, still excited. I was excited last week, still excited this week, because I believe that uh, good things are happening, and it's an amazing uh, time to be living, I believe. And uh, just uh, want to just encourage you today to grab hold of God and let God be God in your life. He's got a perfect plan for you. He, he kn knows your days. He knows everything about you. And he wants to use you mightily. He wants you to be like a, like a, a, a spear that will go forward and thrust into the enemy and, and uh, make a way for, for people to get born again and filled with the Spirit and set free from bondages. Uh, today I, I want to speak about Pentecost. I want to speak about uh, the promise and, and the purpose of the promise. The purpose of the promise. So Father, we just thank you today in Jesus' name. I ask you, Lord, by your... I just bring you down your presence, Father. I pray the anointing of a living God would, would just fall on us right now. And, and Father, I just give you all the praise, give you all the glory for everything you're about to do. And Lord, for that, we will give you all the praise. I just want to speak to Lars for a few seconds. Lars, I just sense the Spirit of God is coming upon you in a fresh way. I just believe that God is going to touch you in a, in a mighty way. And uh, I, I just saw that there's a fresh anointing coming upon your life. I sense that there's new direction and it's a whole new way of living. Uh, you've, you've done certain things in the past, but I want to say that I believe what God is about to do in your life will exceed abundantly more than you've ever done before. And I, I just saw as you begin to rise, as you begin to stand, I sense grave clothes falling off you, uh, just a negativity, failure, defeat, whatever it might be, falling off you and God putting a brand new mantle on your life, a brand new mantle on your life. And while I was just saying that, I just sense, uh, Freddie, Freddie, I believe that God is going to touch you in a mighty way. I, I just sense that it is a brand new way for you as well. And it's like as if God, there's, it's, a, it's like as if there's a mantle that's been on your life, but God's just going to do something different. If I can say it like this, it's like a shell that's being removed. That shell is not a bad shell. It's not a negative thing. It's not something there that you should be ashamed of. No, it's something there that you've worked in in the past, but that shell is, is now being broken and a new uh, mantle has been put on your life too. And, and I just believe that it's just going to touch you. It's going to minister to you. It's going to bring you into something so dynamic. You and Jess are going to know joy. You're going to know victory. You're going to know the power of God in a brand new way. Uh, and it's a little bit, I guess, if I could say it's like this, it's like the, the uh, going into that chrys uh, chrys chrysalis and, and coming out on the other side something totally different. And uh, it's, it's going to be better and it's going to be stronger. And I pray that, uh, that you can understand and I pray the Spirit of God will reveal it to you what He's doing in this hour because it is a day of visitation. It is a day where God is going to raise up people. He's looking for hungry people. He's looking for people that, that have got a passion for a particular thing. I see your passion uh, for worship. I, I see Jess's passion for service and, and, and wanting just to do things uh, for God in, in such a better way. And, and, and I'm believing that God's just going to bring fresh revelation, fresh anointing uh, over your lives that will take you to that place that you're desiring to be in. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just continue to, to just believe today for for the freshness of your spirit to come upon us. Lord, we, we are, uh, you, there's a purpose uh, for the promise. You've given us all of us precious, precious promises. You've spoken things over all of our lives that some of us uh, find it difficult even to be able to do, uh, contain it or receive it. Uh, but I pray today that you would open the eyes of our understanding that we would be able to see exactly what you're doing in this hour that we're living in. Amen and amen. Acts 2.39 uh, says this, The promise is unto you and unto your children and to them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. God has poured out promises. He said amazing things over people's lives. But this book is full of promises. It's full of the Word of God. And God, when God comes and, and speaks, Sometimes it's so contrary to where we're at. Sometimes it's so far away from even our wildest imaginations. It may have even been, say, dreams that we've dreamed about in the past, but, but now we look at it and we think, oh, well, that'll never come to pass or that will never, ever happen. 
But if you can not grow weary, if you can continue to hang on, I believe that we will see the fulfillment of our God. There's a man in the Bible, a very interesting man. His name is Samson. And, and God came in a, in a special way, in a particular way. And, and I just, uh, to a woman that was barren, to a man that had never had any children perhaps, and, 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 and he comes and he speaks a word. And to see, what we've got to do is we, we can't allow our present circumstances to interpret what God is wanting to do in the future. And it just that because these couple were barren, and most likely thought, well, that's the end of that, that will never ever happen. And then God comes to speak, and God starts to say some things. We've got to somehow or other grasp it. And the woman that God spoke to through his angel grasped what God was saying, and she grabbed a hold of it, and, and she ran with it. And, and this is what it says in Judges chapter 13. And he spoke to the woman, and the angel of the Lord, in verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 3, And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed now you are barren and have no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink, and do not let uh, eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. And no razor shall come upon his head. And the child, child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. He shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. The children of Israel were captive to the Philistines. The Phil Philistines had them in captivity. And, and God's now beginning to move to deliver the children of Israel out of this captivity. I believe that that same spirit that same thing that is over, that God wants to do is over our nation, Australia today. God wants to deliver us out of the bondage, out of the corruption, out of this grip of Satan, out of the grip of whatever is stopping us from becoming exactly what God wants us to be. The promise is yea and amen. And I'm wanting to talk about the purpose of the promise. The promises we can believe, they are forever and ever and ever and ever. And it says here, uh, uh, you know, th th that when Samson started to move, he was doing things contrary. He was doing things there that perhaps some of us don't understand. And you really need to read the whole book of, of Judges here in this particular area anyhow and just capture it, uh, capture what God is saying here. Because you see, God was using Samson and, and Samson somehow or other, uh, fell in love with a, a woman of the Philistines and, and he wanted her. And he, he said, I, I want that woman. And, and the, the mother and father, they couldn't understand it. They said, why would you want to take a, a bride from the Philistines? Why can't you find a bride from our family, from the, from the children of Israel? But the Bible was very, very clear. It says that the father and mother did not know that it was the Lord. And he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines. For at, the, at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. God was seeking an occasion. And when I was reading this, I had a little bit of a chuckle. Because sometimes, you know, we've got God so serious and, and, and all these sort of things. But God is a very, very real God. And, and, and I can imagine him there saying, I've got a man here. And uh, we're going to play havoc in that enemy's territory. And, and we're just going to upset them so bad And I, because I'm seeking an occasion. And I believe today that God, the same God that spoke to Samson, is seeking an occasion that he might disturb and disrupt and pull down and break because Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. There's so many promises that he said. And so, so um, here's Samson now going through life and, 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 and God's going to use him in a mighty way. God stirred him up. But the thing that was so unique about Samson was the Spirit of the Lord would come upon him. The Spirit of the Lord would come upon him. And, and certain things happened to him. And of course, we know the story. And look, I, look, I could not preach this message uh, with the depth and the... And, and everything, the expression that needs to be really, really told. I'm just going to touch the surface. I'm just going to bring out one little aspect. 
But you see, it was when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And we know that, that he got stirred in the natural and the Spirit of God would come upon him. We know he had a riddle and his, and his wife there, she, she told the riddle to, his, uh, to her uh, friends and, and uh, he got caught out and had to pay. And so the Spirit of God came upon him and he goes out and he kills uh, 30 odd people to get the, the, the garments and brought them back and gave them to them. Then he goes on a bit further and we find out that, the, that his father-in-law then gave his wife away to another man and he comes back and he gets cranky again, but the Spirit of God comes upon him and, and, uh, and, and he goes and catches 300 foxes and, and he ties their tails together and he puts fire on them and, and, and then uh, sends them through the, all the Philistines' um, paddocks and they, he burnt all their crops and he burnt their vineyards and, and played havoc and the, and the Philistines then came down to the, to the Israelites and, and the tribe of Judah and and uh, they said, what are you doing coming? You know, we're just, we're just doing everything that you ask us to do. And I want to stop here right now, church. It's not time for us to just passively sit by and play the devil's tune. It's time for somebody to rise up. I believe that there's a select group, there's a group, there's, there's a church within the church that's beginning to rise up and say, I am not just going to passively sit by and play and dance to the, to the devil's tune. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to start to declare what God says. I'm going to start to declare what the Word of God says. I'm going to make a statement. There's going to come a change because God is seeking an occasion to come against the Philistines. He's come against the works of Satan and he's going to build his church. And that's you and me, friend. And I want to get stirred this morning. I want to get so stirred. I want to get so passionate about this word. I want to get so passionate about this generation that we're living in right now. Australia needs a move of God. It doesn't just need to sit by passively. And so the, the, the children of God, they said, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, please, please, we, we're not stirring anything. They said, we haven't come for you. We've come for this man, Samson. And so the, the children of God go down to Samson and, and they, they say, you know, you've stirred up these Philistines. And, they, and he said, look, I tell you what, I'll make a pact with you. You can do whatever you like. You can bind me. You can take me to the Philistines. But whatever you do, don't you kill me. You hand me over to them alive. And so they bound him with all these ropes and so forth and, and they take him to the Philistines. And when he gets there, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Hallelujah. Oh, friend, I want to tell you the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you are a new man. You are a new creature. You're, you're a different man. You're a different woman. You're a different child. The power of God comes. The anointing starts to flow. And it says there that, that, that it just burst those, those uh, cords and, and he picked up the jawbone of an ass and he, and, and he killed a thousand men with it. What an amazing thing. And then he walks through and, and because they were just going to bind him and, and he goes over and he picks up the gates and he picks up the pillars and he walks up the mountain and he shakes those pillars. Oh, Father, let that spirit come upon us. Let the mighty Holy Ghost come upon us. Let the power of God come upon us. We know there then that it goes on in life and he meets a woman by the name of Delilah. Oh, the old Delilah. And there she was. There she was in all her beauty. And he loved her dearly. And, and the Philistines came down and they said, you've got to find out what, where his power is. You've got to find out where the power of God is, where, where he gets his power from. And many times we know that she seduced him and, and he said this and that and it didn't work. But finally... Finally, she got beside him. She nagged him. She cried on him. She, she just kept harassing him until he said, okay, I've had enough. And he told her the secret of his power. Nobody has ever cut my hair. And of course, she lulls him to sleep. And as she lulls him to sleep, they cut his hair. You see, it really, it wasn't his hair. It was the promise, don't touch your hair. Don't cut your hair. And as he broke that promise, then the Spirit of God left him, left him. And then it says that there that she cried out like before and, and, and the Philistines came down and as they came down, he jumped up as before, not realizing that the Spirit of God had left him, not realizing that the anointing had left him. And they grabbed him and they bound him, and they put out his eyes and, and there he is, this poor man. Could do nothing after that but live a defeated life. He was blind. He was bound. 
He was grinding in the mill, going round and round. Friend, the devil knows today the secret of our power. The secret of our power is in the Holy Spirit. And he's doing everything he can to pull down that amazing power, to get men in uh, in the church to to deny it, to walk away from it, not to, to have it any longer in their life. Father, guys, we need, and Father, I ask you, will you pour out your Spirit again upon us? We desperately need an outpouring of your Spirit again. We need a fresh revelation of the anointing of the life of the Spirit. My God, without the Spirit, we're just blind. Uh, we're just like, like, like Samson was. He lost his power. He was defeated in life. Too many Christians today are defeated. Oh yeah, they might talk in tongues, but that's all they are is tongue talkers. We, we need the power of God. We need the anointing of God. We need that uh, fresh outpouring. He was blind. He was bound. The man that God raised up is now in chains. The church that God raised up when he said, I will build my church and the gates of Hayes will not prevail against it. And I'll give them the keys of the kingdom and whatever they bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever they loose on earth will be loose in heaven. They've been bound in chains of tradition, lies and deceit, humanism and goodness knows what else. It's a picture, picture of a church today. Christians without the power of God. Blind to the fact that we can have the same power that the early church had. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Freedom is what we need today. God our Lord wants us to have that power which those in the Bible had. We need that so we can reach this generation. The early church touched the then known world by the power of God. Many people today are bound by religious traditions, political correctness, having a form of godliness but no power, saying the baptism of the Holy Spirit finished with the apostles. Let me just read it to you again. This, the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord thy God shall call. It is just as active, just as real today as it ever, ever was. We need the power of God. We need the anointing of God. We, we need it so very, very much. Hunger for truth. Hunger for truth will bring about revival in your life. Hunger for the Word. Hunger for the anointing. Hunger, hunger will create something inside you, will release truth in you. But you see, what happened there was Samson's hair began to grow again. Samson's hair began to grow again. The wind, I believe, of revival is beginning to blow again over Australia, over the nations of the world. Just like the day of Pentecost, a fresh wind is blowing again, stirring the hearts of men and women, stirring our hearts. I believe the cry is beginning to be heard again. You see, Samson, when that wind when the freshness, when the Holy Spirit came upon him again, when his hair began to grow, when, when, when the reality, when he began to cry out to God. Friend, it's not a time just to put, run with the foxes. It's not a time just to, to, to passively sit by. He could have just sat by and said, well, it's over for me. I had my day. I killed a thousand people with a jawbone of an ass. I did this, I did that but now I'm blind, oh wretched man that I am. But no, he began to cry out. Friend, it's time to cry out again. God, will you hear our cry? He began to cry out, oh Father, Father, will you come again? Will you help me? Will you empower me? Will you come again? And he asked the lad, he said, lad, where are? As they, as they brought him out to make fun of him. You know, a lot of people might try to make fun of us, but I want to tell you, At the end, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, he'll help us to have a major victory. 
They were just going to have fun with him. And, and, and he said to the lad, where is that major pillar? Where is that main pillar? Where is that main pillar? says that there were thousands upon thousands of people there, all the lords, all the, all the hierarchy there. And he went over there and he cried out again as he grabbed hold of those pillars. And he started to say, Father, come again. And as he began to push, as he began to push down, it came. And it says there that more died that day than they right throughout his whole ministry. The wind is blowing again and we're going to see a great revival. We're going to see a great fire. You see, what catches God's attention? Please, let me say it again. God is seeking. He's looking for an occasion. He's looking for somebody that, that he can use to, to come against Satan and all the works that he is performing over the nation. The abortions, the, 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 the rules and regulations. All that stuff is seeking occasion. And in this hour that we're living in, we've got an opportunity to rise up, to rise up, you people of power. See, there's things there that catch our attention. God is seeking an occasion. Obviously, as Samson began to cry out, God just came in his power. Different things will catch God's attention. In Mark 10, 46, there was a man, blind man, on the side of the road. And he heard that Jesus was passing by. And he just didn't passively sit there and think, oh, well, if I found favor in God, well, perhaps God will do this. Or if, if it's God's will that, God, that Jesus, he'll come over and heal me. No, he cried out because God wants to heal all who are oppressed of the devil. He cried out with a loud voice, Jesus of Nazareth, hallelujah, <laughs> come and help me. Jesus, son of David, Jesus, come. Jesus, come. And, and the people around him said, shut up, be quiet. Don't, be, don't, don't make this racket. But he cried the louder. And that caught the attention of Jesus. I want to tell you, friends, Jesus is walking by. And if the church doesn't start yelling out, if the church doesn't start crying out, if the church doesn't start believing God, that God can do it, nothing will change. Nothing will change. He cried out, Jesus of Nazareth. That's what caught the attention of Jesus. And he stopped. And he went over and said, call him to, to me. And, and Jesus healed him. There's a woman who had an issue of blood. She had no right. She had no privileges. She should not have been there. She was unclean. But she didn't allow that to stop her. She came to Jesus and she began to say to herself, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. If I can just touch him, if I can just touch him. There was a tenacity about her. There was a determination about her. There was something inside her that, that was more real than the, than the condition that she had in her body. She knew that the master was walking by. She knew that the Savior of the world was there and that he could touch her and that he could heal her. And, and she began to cry out with that tenacity. Tenacity means being able to grip firmly. See, we, we've got this soft, miserable hand now. and we, we have a little grip. No, grab hold of God with everything you've got. Grab hold of the Word. Grab hold of the promise with everything that's within you. Then Jesus will come, and I believe that He will touch you. Grab it with a grip. And she grabbed it with a grip. She had a tenacity. And she was able there that Jesus cried out, Who touched me? Who touched me? You see, friend, you've got to start crying out. You've got to start reaching out. You've got to start grabbing hold of. You've got to start believing. We know the story only too well. Who touched me? She grabbed hold in such a way that virtue flowed from the master's body. Virtue flowed. Our approach to Jesus is so important. Oh, Jesus, we just love you. That's true. That is so true. And there's a time there when we've got to get on our faces before God. We might weep. We might just cry out, God, I love you with everything within me. I just love you. And that is one facet. But there's another facet. There's another facet. 
Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Friend, we're living in the day where we should be pulling down strongholds, smashing the works of the enemy, breaking through, breaking through into the realm of the Spirit, getting a fresh mantle, getting a fresh anointing over our lives. It's the way we approach Jesus. It's not, oh, I hope it works. Oh, I, I hope it works. No, if I can touch the hem of his garment, grab him with a grip. Grab him with a grip. Oh, hallelujah. There's a few things that we uh, need to continually remind ourselves of. Continually remind ourselves of. The purpose of the promise. The purpose that Jesus came on this planet. The purpose of the outpouring of the Spirit. The purpose that you and I are alive in this hour that we're living in right now. There is a purpose behind it. The purpose for Jesus, the Christ, coming to planet Earth was not just to get us to heaven. In 1 John 3, 8 it says, For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest, that He might destroy the works of Satan. God is seeking an occasion to move against Satan. God is seeking an occasion. He's wanting to stir us like he stirred uh, Samson, like he stirred him that he rose up and all he had was the jawbone of an ass. Killed a thousand people with it. You'll be amazed what you can do under the unction of the Holy Spirit. The purpose for God sending the Holy Spirit to the church. We know only too well, and I want to just remind us, we've got to continually remind ourselves. In Acts 1.8 it says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, witnesses of my power. Witnesses of my power. John 16 verse 13 says, The Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into truth. We need to remind ourselves that there was a purpose in the sending of the Holy Spirit. Not just so that we could join the Tongue Talkers Club. Not just so we could be Pentecostal. A lot of people that are Pentecostal really are no longer Pentecostal. They, they have a, perhaps a form of godliness, but no power. I'm not trying to discredit. I'm just saying that the enemy has got in and, and with his lies and with his deceit and, and, and conned us. And we've, we've come under the power, like the, the children of Israel were under the power of the Philistines. We're under the power of a seducing spirit that's trying to take us away from the reality. Well, we've got perhaps as religion, but no reality. This purpose of the believer, the church, to maintain the kingdom of God on earth till he returns to maintain the kingdom of God on earth until he return, returns. We're not just meant to be spectators. Oh yeah, you can go to the football uh, match and, and you, can, uh, you, know, you can be there and enjoy the game and cheer them on. And You must really know more about the football game than you think anyhow than the coach. <laughs> you tell the coach what he should be doing and what he shouldn't be doing. Our coach is the Holy Spirit. He knows what he's doing. I'm not telling the Holy Spirit what, he, what he's doing if I'm only a spectator and sitting in the, in the pews. I don't want to just be a spectator. I want to be on the field. I want to be one of those ones that have got the ball under my arm. I want to be one of those ones that see the enemy come and, and hit him with everything that I've got. I want to be one of those ones there that are looking at the try line, looking at the score line. I want to be one of those ones that win, amen. I don't want to lose. We are in a battle. There is a battle for Australia that's going on right now. And God is seeking an opportunity to raise His church up. And if we give God something to work with, He certainly will work with you. He will raise you up in this hour. He will anoint you. You see, he, he, this is what Jesus said to you and me, to His church. In Mark 16, uh, uh, verse 15, And He said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who received and is baptized will be saved. 
but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with other tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amen. That's, that's, that's the purpose of the church. That's what God wants us to do. Jesus came back to take what was stolen in the Garden of Eden. He came back to take, give back what was stolen. One of the things that was stolen is real relationship. Real relationship, encounters. And a relationship with Jesus where, where you can cry, Abba, Father. Where you do realize that you're a son or a daughter. You're a joint heir with Jesus. We're, we're not trying to play some, some game that, that I'm nobody. No, I'm, I'm a child of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. I can cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit of God lives in me. The Spirit of God comes to me. Came to take back what was stolen. Oh man, it's very, very important to have that relationship with Jesus. To reestablish the kingdom of God. He did this by giving his life as a ransom for man's sin. Thank God. Thank God today that the grave couldn't hold him. Thank God he arose. <laughs> he arose, hallelujah. He arose, he arose triumphant or his foes, he arose. And by faith, we all rose with him. After the resurrection, Matthew 28, 18 and 19, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all Everybody say all. We all know what the Greek and Hebrew word means. <laughs> all. <laughs> all. Jesus came and he said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore. I've received all authority, all power. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. If we lose the purpose of the promise, we just become tongue talkers we've got to have the purpose of the promise Jesus carried this authority with him everywhere he went the disciples carried that anointing Acts 10 verse 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went around doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil for God was with him what an amazing lot of scriptures. Luke 10, uh, Jesus, it says there that Jesus anointed the 70. He said to them, heal the sick. Say the kingdom of God has come. I'm not reading all these scriptures. You can read them yourself. Luke 10 verse 1 and 8 and 9. The, uh, it says there that, the, that the, these people that he anointed, the 70 came back and, and they said, oh, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said, marvel not that the devils are subject to you, but marvel that your names are written down in the Lamb's book of life. Friend, I marvel today that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I marvel today that I have been born again, that I'm a child of God. I marvel at that today, that God would save a wretch like me. And then he went on to say, and I saw Satan fall from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. God is seeking an occasion. He is seeking an occasion. Oh God, come again. You see, fear can't hurt you. Devil's works can't hurt you when you're covered with the blood, when you're covered with the promises of God, when you've received the promise, when you're covered with the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, blood is so real. Proverbs 29 verse 2. And we're living in a time today when, when we're seeing unrighteous people making all the decisions for our nation and the church is passively sitting by. It says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked man rules, the people groan. We're living in a time when a lot of people are groaning and complaining about the restrictions, 
the restrictions that, that are upon us. We can't do this. We can't do that. I'm amazed how, how the enemy got away with this. I am so amazed when the Bible says, forsake not yourself uh, for the assemblings of yourself together. Don't, don't do that. But we're doing that today and we're just accepting it. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. We've lost our authority. We've forgotten the authority that God's given to us. We've, we've lost it. And wicked people are ruling. It's not this government. It's not that government. It's a satanic rule. It's demonic. have got into these people. They honestly think that they are doing the right thing. But Satan has sown a lie into their life because the church has allowed it. The children of God were in bondage to the Philistines. And we can be in bondage to the works of the enemy. And he said all this authority he gave to you as a believer. We've got to understand the authority that Jesus had on this earth. He went, sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal all the sick. What an amazing thing God did in those people. You may, we've got to make sure in this time, and this might sound a little silly, but friend, we've got to get under the spout where the glory comes out. We've got to get under. We've got to get under. Nancy and I... We first started ministry, we went to look after neglected children. Had no idea what that was. Funny little kids, good kids, loved them very, very much. But they had inbuilt things in their lives. And, and uh, little Jimmy, little Jimmy, we sent him off for the shower. And we see him walking down with a towel over his shoulder. <laughs> and... And he'd come back doing the same thing five or ten minutes later. And I noticed that all up his leg was all dirt and, and stuff. You know, he was, he was still dirty. And I said to him, and I said, I don't know what's going on there. But anyhow, next night when he comes down, <laughs> I, I got down on the floor because there was a crack under the door about so far. And I got down on the floor and I just looked. And all I could see was his legs. And he turned on the shower and he had all the steam and it's running like anything out there, but he didn't get in the shower. <laughs> he stood outside the shower. And after five or ten minutes, he'd turn the shower off and then go, you know, there, wait for a little minute, and then put the towel over his shoulder and start dancing back out again. See, if you don't get under, you won't get touched. You won't get, you won't get what you went for. You go in dirty, come out dirty, or you go in one way, you still come out the same way. We've got to get under the spout where the glory comes out. As a believer, not just as a churchgoer, have a God-given authority that God has given to you. We're, we're, we're doing funny things and there's, un, you know, God did unusual miracles. Can I say, get ready for the unusual. Get ready for the unusual. It doesn't matter what other people think about us. Just get ready for a, a move of the Spirit. And God is going to do unusual things. I, I believe that with every fiber of my being. Friend, it's time for the church to rise up. It's time to be counted. It's time to say, yay, yay, yay. So, Father, I'm asking you today, Lord, I, I'm just praying, oh God, that you're going to build a church. You're seeking an occasion. And you want to build your church. You want to raise her up, my God. You want to make her strong and powerful, it's got nothing to do with age. Joshua and Caleb and Moses and all those other guys, they just had the anointing, the power of God. Some of the great men and women of old, you know, it doesn't really matter whether you're young. David was a young man and the anointing was on him. You don't have to get old. You just have to get filled. You just have to allow the anointing to, to get around you and, 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 and impregnate you with the power. And believe God and, and have that tenacity. Grab hold of God. Grab hold of this word. Grab hold of the truth. Grab hold of what everything that it says in here. 
God, you said that we can do exceedingly abundantly. God, you want to give us precious promises. There's so much more. So, Father, today I'm asking you to touch the church. Worldwide, touch us here on the Sunshine Coast. Touch global connections, my God. Touch us, touch us, touch us. Move mightily by your Spirit, I pray. Father, if there's people here today listening to me that, that do not have that relationship with you, or they've gone lukewarm, or, or they've walked away, or the, or the promises have just let them erode in their thinking, Lord, would you breathe again? Would you touch them again, Father? Would you move again on people's lives? God, would you save people? Yeah, you, you want to touch everybody. That's a silly question to ask. God, will you raise us up that we will be a voice, that we will go out there and preach your gospel, that we will go out there with the anointing on our lives. Lord, empty words won't help people that, that don't know you. Anointed words, words filled with the power of God, no matter how simple they are. It might be just a statement like God loves you, but if it's anointed, it would be so powerful that it would break the heart or break the, the, the bonds or the things that bind people and they'd find a release in Jesus Christ. It's got nothing, it's got so much to do with the word, with the anointing, with your power. Father, would you touch people today? Lord, would you heal people today? Lord, would you raise us up today? Would you let your anointing touch us afresh? Touch us afresh. Oh my God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We thank you today. We thank you so much. Oh, praise God. I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in today. Would you let us know if, if these messages are helping you at all or what God's saying to you or, or, or you know, if you've been touched or whatever, if you've been healed, delivered, or if you've given your life to Christ. Would you just let us know? Just let us know what, what, what God's doing in your life. Oh, friend, we're praying for uh, Greg and Joanne to come over. And uh, don't forget to tune in on Sunday morning again to uh, TBN Pacific and uh, make sure you uh, log in or whatever you've got to do there uh, to get involved and be part of that. And uh, just have a fantastic, have an amazing day. I, I just pray the blessing of God over your life. I pray right now you would sense the anointing of God that would raise you up, that would lift you up, that would empower you that would cause you to rise above whatever it is. The enemy comes in to seek you, to grab hold of you, to try to stop you. He's trying to take the power of God out of the church. But God has come to raise you up. He will raise you up. He will lift you up. Just take him by the hand. Get a grip. Get a grip. Get a grip. Hallelujah. Thank you today. God bless you. Neil Meyer saying... So good to be with you today. Amen.